Yeah. I guess he doesn't realize this is above average for your 13-year-old kid from Oklahoma. I was blown away at how amazed they were at what Matt was doing. You know, I thought, that's just, everybody does that in California, they must. They watched him do the first jump, and all of a sudden, all photographers just kind of just congregated and watched him, and he stole the show, basically. He won the expert. After the show, he had 15 sponsors facing him. You know, everybody wanted a piece of him. He was on every cover of the magazine that, that next month. He went from an unknown to sponsored writer, you know, in one event. Mr. Hoffman, I'd also like to ask you, how many surgeries have you had over your lifespan? Oh, okay, surgeries. Um, too many, I guess, would be the best. <laughs> like, uh, you know, you try not to remember them all, but I, I think I, I definitely broke 20 of them, you know? Like, I've had over 20 surgeries. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pretty much down to duct tape and zip ties keeping me together. <laughs> Awesome, next question. Um, Miss, I, oh crap. Um, Mr. Jones, I just wanted to tell you that you changed my life with your film adaptation. And I'm sorry, I'm really scared. Um, I love you. And <laughs> thank you very much. And I, thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it. She's awesome! Let's hear it! I'm getting another question. First of all... Alright, let's break. Is this for you? Uh, we'd like to say uh, thanks for staying in Oklahoma. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I don't know where else to go. <laughs> and uh... What is your next gig? Oh, you know, that's... Uh, I, if, if you really wanted to dig deep what my next gig was, it would scare my whole family and I would be here all night trying to explain myself. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I just dream and just try to figure out where that leads me. I don't really know what my next gig really is. It's kind of contingent on what my body is going to allow me to do, but I... You know, I have, I have a few ideas, a few dreams that I think would be great to experience. Uh, yeah, maybe a cage match with my brother. He's, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> that was just thrown out at me in the front row. But, uh, um, but yeah, no, I don't, I don't really know. You know, I, I just make it up as I go, you know, because I, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. It's just however you feel, whatever you, like, you know, uh, you know, who knows? It, it could, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, I've got a two-parter back here. Hey, uh, Mr. Hoffman, what's up? I want to ask you how you still have uh, medical insurance. And part two? Um, I wanted to know how long it took you to build that big ghetto ramp. <laughs> I, 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 would, I would build all my ramps over the winter because you can't really ride. And so, you know, it's probably about three or four months I usually get myself to build that stuff. So... That was a great thing living here is, uh, um, you know, you just have, basically, you have a, a few months to try to conceive your next uh, con contraption that you're going <laughs> to play on for the, for the uh, spring and summer season. But uh, um, what was the first question? Uh, How do you have medical insurance? Oh, yeah, that's, that's the, beautiful, the, the beautiful thing about what I do, people are entertained by. And so every once in a while, I get a SAG gig. And SAG doesn't ask for pre-existing uh, conditions before they insure you. So I, I, try to keep, I try to keep my SAG insurance. <laughs> Next question. So Matt, after uh, all of the success as an amateur and then as a pro and then you know just fun in the backyard, what is your best moment? What do you remember the most, and what's going to you know die with you? Oh, you know, I, you know, it's it's hard to it's hard to say. I mean, I I, I love every time I can get up after I hit hard. <laughs> That's always a great one. But you know, just like seeing seeing my beautiful family. I'm the luckiest father in the world. I got a beautiful nine year old and a seven year old and. And I just like, uh, you know, and just this film, you know, just be able to express, you know, what this, what this life really means to me 
without someone translating it to me being that crazy guy that uh, um, has a death wish, you know? Like, it's, it's, it, I was able to, like, to express this through friends of mine that understood and did it the most honest way it could possibly done, be done. And I, I, really, I, I really haven't even, uh, like, uh, you know, I, I, it's, just, it's just a really ama amazing uh, time in my life right now that I was able, because this is a story I never thought I would ever tell, much less be able to tell to where I feel like you guys walk away with the same thing I walk away with from this film, and, and that's never been done in my life. Two more questions, Matt. Here's one. How's the missus hanging with all of this? <laughs> oh, you know, it's like, that, that's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lucky man. I've got a beautiful, I've got the most beautiful uh, wife that just understands passion, you know? She understands that, you know, she, she danced for the Ballet Oklahoma for 15 plus years. And so she, she decided to live her life for the passion of it and not for any other... Uh, other, um, you know, benefit, uh, whether it be monetary or social, you know, it's like she just did this because that's what she loved and she understood, it's the first person I met that understood you can't argue with passion, it's just you're on with, you're along with the, you're along for the ride, <laughs> whatever it may become, so she just held on and just let me, let me just live my life and I, we, she's lived her life and we've celebrated it together. All right, last question. Uh, this question's for Matt and Spike. I would like to know how you two know each other, like, and how that relationship has kind of developed. Oh man, you know, like, you, like Spike, you know, he, he just he started his, his brilliance in photography, and and uh, I was riding a bike, and I just happened to be someone that he could he could uh, shoot and just uh, show the world uh, his perspective of of like shooting an aerial that most people just saw one dimension and you see it all through his photography so it's like you know i, I guess it's hard to uh like explain but uh um but uh we just uh i don't know how do, how do we how do we meet just like traveling around europe together or something right <laughs> Um, yeah, we met, uh, th um, we both rode BMX bikes and I, I got to photograph him and we started traveling together and going on trips and touring together and, um, and uh, I feel like I was lucky enough to meet him and watch him do what he did and watch him become what he became and, and I think the thing that I always knew even, you know, before, even just watching him ride when he was, you know, an amateur is there was something pure about him, and I feel like um, in this documentary we got to capture what wh who he is, and w which is, uh, you know, I think if, if there's one word for who he is, it's pure, and there's um, that's sort of how he's lived his life and how he continues to live his life. So uh, I'm happy to be here with him. Uh, that, that, mean, that means everything to me, Spike. And 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 what I learned from Spike <laughs> is that. You never, you just have to be, you have to expect the unexpected at all times. You never know anything can happen anytime. <laughs> that, was a, that was a great thing. It's like, you think it's like, like it was, yeah. I, we've just had a, a, lot of, a lot of fun because, uh, because, because Spike has a, the strongest spirit that can just like change the world in a, the matter of a second and you're like just along holding on for the ride. And it's been, it's been a great ride. So I appreciate everything that, uh, <laughs> that you know, his spirit has contributed to our world. Hey guys, uh, one last final note from the BMX fans in the back. They want to say, rise above. Oh yeah, yes. OG, that's uh, punk that's rock, right. uh, almost uh, back to Black Flag, yo, for sure. You know, nothing is, uh, <laughs> you, you, there's nothing that you can't rise above, yo. And then the final, final question is, when are you making track bikes? If you, what's that, track bikes? Track bikes. What's that's a track what bike? I don't know, your dudes want to know, let's find out. What are the, what are track bikes, dudes? <laughs> If, if track bikes are like uh, kind of in the... And she's birthed a big air like, on her big heels. Here you go. Uh, you oh, know, fixed, fixed gear? gears. Fixed gears. Oh. 
As long as, yeah, Make yeah. some track bikes and sponsor all the Hellcats back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I uh, if I can learn how to play this way on a, on a fixed gear, then I'm all down. Like, I, like I, yeah, I don't, I'm still, I, I'm still kind of new to the fixed gear stuff, but if you can go big, show me. Mr. Hoffman, can I get your autograph? Do you guys have any last final thoughts you want to leave these folks with? Hey, thank all you guys for coming out. I mean, this is like a, a very, uh, this is a great moment for me. I'm in my hometown and, and like I've been doing this my whole life. You know, like this, this is a story that happened over 20 years ago. And, uh, and just to have you guys here to, to celebrate, you know, just uh, what I love is pretty amazing. You know, I never thought, I, I thought my, the things I love was so, you know, abstract. I never knew I'd have this crew to help be here to celebrate it with me. But, you know, uh, you guys, that, this whole documentary has justified every slam, every surgery, every broken bone, every, every near-death experience in my life because I could never have asked or wished for anything more. So thank you.